All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna just take a, a quickly go through what we have done last time, add some features to this so we ho see how we can actually do things uh, more proper, and then uh, we'll continue after that, okay? So the very first thing that I look at this code and I see it's absolutely necessary is this. Take a look. You see these two lines? What does it do? New character with a length and then copies, right? New character with a length and then copies. New character with a length and then copies. Why should I repeat something over and over when it's identical? Those things should go into functions. Okay, so what I'm going to do immediately after that is going to create a function in the utils to do that for me, which is, so I'm going to remove this. You add the, the comments. So uh, we did a C string over here, actually. Is it a dynamic one? It is a dynamic one, right? Yeah, that's the dynamic one. Cool. Okay, so let's happy. Well, well, uh, for dynamic memory allocation, I'm going to create a function, and I'm going to call it allo copy. So it allocates and copies, and because it allocates and copies, it needs to set a pointer to an address, right? Because it needs to set a pointer to an address, I cannot just pass the pointer. I have to pass its reference. If you just pass the pointer, it passes the address, not the pointer itself to be set. To set a pointer, you need to pass its reference. So <clears throat> in here, I'm going to say character pointer point, the pointer uh, reference uh, BTR. That's the pointer or, or string or, yeah, it is a string, isn't it? Yeah, it's a string, right? So it's a dynamic string. And then we need a size t length. So this is what we want, right? So I'm going to bring this over here. And I'm literally going to copy what we had in my string in here. So I'm going to get something that is simple. There you go. Copy. OK. Oh, so that's not, so it, sorry, it actually, so we need two. One we need, yeah, so let's, let's do two, my apologies. So this allo copy, it's not size t actually, it's another string, constant character pointer source. So that's the source, it's like a string copy and that's the destination. Let's do it like that. So this is a source, and that's the destination. So what I do over here is exactly what I did over there. So I'm going to say this. So first, I have to make sure source exists, right? If source doesn't exist, then I don't do any copying, right? But if I'm allo copying a source, we have to think, am I setting this one to null if this is null? Because I'm allocating and copying, right? So if this is null, that should become null too. So I'll do that. I'm going to say, before I do anything, I'm going to set it to null. So destination is null. You can make this one as automatic as possible. You can even delete the destination if you want to. You can say delete it and set to null to make sure that the allo copy is happening safely. Because if you're allocating something, they either better be null or nothing in it, right? So not a bad idea. I can actually do that. I can say not only that, but delete it too. You got to see the source codes between two classes are different because what we teach over there, like people have different responses, so different things come up. So I'm saying when I'm allocating onto destination, first I'm removing the destination, then set it to null. Then if source exists, then I'm going to do the copying. And copying happens exactly the same. So I'm going to go destination is new character uh, ut.sdrlen of, of source plus one. And I'm going to go ut.sdrlen of 
SDR copy into destination, the source. Now that I have this information in my allo copy, I'm going to go to my string and use it accordingly. So in here, I'm going to say this one, oh, this one is tricky because it goes up to certain length, right? So this one is going up to certain length. It just doesn't copy. So for that one, we have to overload that one and add a length to it. We'll do that later. So this one is a regular one. So it is already, this one it says if, so everything is set over here. I don't need to do anything. All I need to do is to do allo copy. ut.allo copy uh, into m data the C string, right? So it deletes it, no problem, because it's already set to null. I followed the rule of having unused pointers set to null, so everything is good. And auto copy is just allocate and copy. And in here, all these things that it's done, it deletes the data, null, everything's done in there, right? So again, ut allo copy into m data the C string. That's done. Then in here, it's different because it is up to certain length. So I can actually have that one inside what I have. So what I can in my utility, I can have allo copy created, but up to a maximum length. And the good thing is that it may be used someday. Okay? So Remember all these things that you are writing and document it. When you are writing functions for different things, if you are carrying your utils around, you can reuse your function. It saves lots of time. And because these functions are written with caution and you are following all the rules that you are supposed to, usually no mistake happens. And if a mistake happens, you have one place to fix it, not 50 different places. That helps you a lot. Okay. I forgot. <laughs> All right. Actually, he wants to. <laughs> All right. So that's that. So, and so create a definition for this one too. It's exactly like the other. So it gets the length, right? So I think I have the code in here. Let me just bring it here. Copy. Bring it to utils. So in here, I'm saying uh, length, length is this one. Oh, I already have max length, so I'm going to. So the only thing is source in here. So in here, it has to be source, source. And this is going to be destination, destination, source. Okay, and I'm going to do these things too. So it deletes the destination, sets it to null. If source exists, it's going to see what is the length, then pick up the, the shortest one, and does the allocation with that, and life is beautiful. So I'll save it. Now I'm going to come back to my string and replace the whole thing with ut dot allocopy uh, in m data from c string. Up to max len. Right? So now, as you see, the code becomes cleaner and cleaner as we go forward. And that's a beautiful thing. So, what is the next thing over here that I covered over there, but I did not cover over here? Oh. We concatenated over there a string to another one. We said that we can concatenate. We should be able to add something to an already existing string. We need to be able to add one thing to another. And to do that, uh, I'm going to write another function that does it. So in this function of mine, what I need to do is to concatenate. So I'm going to say void, uh, not here. Oh, the set function over here. 
the set function that we have is so that's good oh yeah fine so we know how that works so for concatenation I'll do the same thing as set so I'm gonna say return my string reference I'll call it cat to concatenate and in here I'm gonna put the constant character pointer C string now So I can actually add something to the string if I want to. And for that, which is concatenation, I need to do the dirty work again with uh, C string, right? With string header file. And with string header file, I need to be able to concatenate. And to concatenate, I need string cat to be implemented over there which is, again, very simple program to write. So I'm going to go to utils, and I just add that. So in utils, in here, so, so let's actually do this. I'm going to say C string, C stuff. And then in here, it's going to be DMA stuff. And foolproof entries. Okay, something like that. So we categorize to what we're going to do. So now I have the SDR cat. I'm going to add the SDR cat to concatenate. And through the marvelous capability called copy and paste, I'm going to get the SDR cat from here and put it over here. So SDR cat, uh, what it does, it simply sees what is the length of the destination. And then it starts from zero, adds the characters of the source to the end of the destination. So overrides the null and keeps going. And then when it's done, it sets the last one to zero. OK? So it essentially cuts SDR cats it. So that's the string cat from C. Was it here that somebody asked why we are writing this? Why we are not using C string? Was it here? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so now that I want to do the SDR cat over here, all I need to do is to concatenate what I had from that from the other one. But the problem over here is that I need to understand how to resize memory. Because this is a dynamic string, it's not like when I have a character that is 50 characters long, it's exactly 50. I have no space to add anything. I have to make it a little bigger. How do I do that? That is done like this. That is done like this. So how it is done? When you are dealing with dynamic memory allocation, you have a pointer pointing to a dynamic thing. And somehow, you know what the size of that thing is so you can keep track of it. In our string, we don't have a size. Why? Because we null terminate it. Null tells us where is the end of the data, right? But in here, we are assuming that it's not a, a string. Maybe it's an array of employees, right? And you want to hire a new one, something like that. So. Not necessarily uh, we have the size, but in this case, we keep track of the size of the array, too. So two things we need to have when we are doing dynamic memory allocation. One is the pointer, where we point to the data. Two, what was the last dynamic memory allocation size? Again, with string, because we have a null at the end, we simply count. When we hit the null, we know that that's the size. In here, we are keeping the size. So if I want, I have seven things in here. Now I want to make it 14. If I want to make it 14, how do I add to the end of it? The answer is I don't. You don't add to the end of it. 
you actually allocate the total amount needed. It's like I'm, I'm asking you, give me the number of days I have to add for the extension. It's the same thing. If I want to add seven more, I need 14 spaces, right? So that's what you do. You create a temporary pointer, and in that temporary pointer, you allocate 14 things blank. And after you do that, you bring everything from the old one into new one. So you copy everything from the old memory into the new one. You do a loop, start from zero, you go all the way and you copy everything in here, right? So now all the data is copied, you have it. I don't need the old one anymore, right? Now I can wipe the old one out. And when you out wipe the old one out, what happens? That data pointer is pointing to some garbage place. It's not yours anymore. This is the important place that temp is pointing to right now. Remember that. OK? And that place is garbage now. So this pointer is now pointing to garbage. So the very first thing we do is we, we make sure that we have an updated size. So we copy the size and make that size 14 because it's not 7 anymore. It's 14. We don't need to, that, to do that with our string because we null terminate it again. OK? And then after doing this, what we do, what we do, we actually make the data pointer point to where the temporary pointer is pointing. So now, by saying data pointer is equal to where temp is pointing, data pointer will point to here, right? And this temp was created inside the function you were doing the resizing, right? So you don't need to worry about that. When the function is over, that temp is going to be gone. And all that's going to be remaining for you will be the data pointer with new size. Now you can add stuff to it. OK, so that's the process we do when we go through it step by step. So in here, I'll do it manually, and then you can put it in a function in a module or whatever. The slides are in there. These slides are pretty good to actually walk through it. So put it aside and open it and go through the steps when you're doing. It helps you a lot. So now in SDR cat that I'm doing in here, what I need to do is to first see <clears throat> if I have any data. Right? If I have any data, if it's if it's uh, uh, if the data of uh, um, let me just so first I need to know if I'm concatenating anything, and they gave me nothing. The result remains the same. I just don't need to do anything, right? So if I have anything. I have to do the process. Otherwise, just return this. Remember, we never return void. If you, are, if you have a function, a member function that have a void, don't listen to it. Make it a reference of the thing and return this. It becomes handy one day. It comes handy one day. So now that I have that one, I have to create that temporary pointer. In that temporary pointer, I need to put the new character in here, I have to put the total size, right? The total size of everything. Now, if the size of the current object is null, it means I have nothing, right? So if that's the case, I have to check. If m data is not null, if m data is not null, I do SDR len for m data. So if m data is not null, I'll do SDR len of m data, right? But if it is null, the size is 0. I don't need anything, right? So this SDR len, it says data. Are we OK with this? And our SDR len returns what? Returns size t, right? You can just put a u over here. Just to tell to the compiler, hey, this is an unsigned integer. It's not a regular one. Some compilers are picky. They're going to tell you, hey, you are creating a conditional statement. The two types should be identical. 
You cannot have two different types. This is the, so that's that one. So that gives me what is the size of what I have over there. So that's the size of me. But now I need to know what is the size of the data coming in, correct? So these two together will give me what the size is. These two together would tell me what is the total size that I need. Obviously, I'm going to need a, a plus one for the null at the end, correct? So that becomes my size. Now that I have all these things, I'm going to copy everything from M data to temp. Remember that? So now I'm going to say ut.sdr copy, copy into, M, uh, into temp from M data. So now all the data from, from my thing grafted, they went to the temporary one. Now that I have that one, I do not need M data anymore. Correct? I delete it. Now that it's, everything is done and clean and nice, that's that. Now I'm going to say M data will be temp. So M data is now pointing to the temp. It's not pointing to some garbage. And now I know that it's pointing to the, to the new memory with more size, equal exactly the extra size that it needs for data. I can safely concatenate it. So I'm going to say over here ut dot sdr cat to m data the the data that is coming in and i have myself a, a concatenated thing so doing this i can now add stuff to my string so i can actually have something like this uh, where is the main do i have the main here so so t is going to be T is going to be just hello, right? So in here, I'm going to say T print, and then I'm going to say T dot cat. Like that. <clears throat> so what happens with this, or actually, I can do this now. Right? So I'm going to say, T was set to be only hello because it goes up to five, right? And then I'm printing, so it's going to say hello. Now it's going to concatenate how are you today after that. So, so we're going to have hello, comma, how are you? So when I run this, hopefully if everything's okay and I didn't break anything, I'm going to hello, how are you today, right? So you can actually concatenate stuff to it. Now the next day when we come over here, this is where we're going to stop. The next day when you're going to come, I'm going to tell you that we don't always concatenate C strings. Maybe I want to concatenate S to T. Maybe I want to set S to T. For stuff like that, we need to write another function. And then after that, we're going to go to the world of uh, operator overloading and life becomes beautiful. And suddenly, you'll see. The class that you create is going to look like a regular type. It's as if you have a new type in your C++ called MySDR that magically works with all the strings. You don't have to worry about anything like what is the length of this thing, and you can just use strings as if they are variables, exactly like you're doing an integer. OK? Are we good? Yes. Yes. No, no, uh, it's not like, it's a computer. When you overwrite, the, the old value is gone. When I usually say, like, <clears throat> when you get a cup, first you clean it, then you drink water in it. Here, you don't need to do that. Whatever you put removes the old one. So when you overwrite data, it removes the old data. So you don't need to say, if you immediately, for us as rookie programmers, you can just do it, right? And all just to get into the habit of it. But you, don't, you never share that code five years from now to get hired somewhere. 
because if they look at it, they're going to see, oh, wait a minute. So, <clears throat> so what I'm saying over here, do I follow the, 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 the standard that Farda told me that as soon as you delete, you set it to null PTR? The answer is that if it makes you happy, sure. But immediately after, you're overriding it with temp. If some professional sees that, it says, this person doesn't know what assignment is, right? So for now, sure. But when you understand when you don't need to remove all of them and present it to somebody as this is my code for get, to get hired, OK? Yes, sir. This? This is the address of the current object. We talked about, when we talked about pointers, <coughs> int pointer, so integer a, integer pointer p. What is p? It's an address, right? And there's nothing in it. If I say p is set to address of a, now p holds the address of a, right? Now, if I say target of P, what is this? What is target of P? Reference of A. We have to remember, since we learn the type reference, you have to remember, any variable, when it creates naturally, it's created with one reference. You can add to that reference, though. So when I say integer a, what is a? a is the reference of integer. and is a, is a reference to an integer. What is p? p is a pointer to an integer. So from now on, regular variables are references. You can always add to it. I can create, an, so I can have five references to the same variable if I want to. We learned that, OK? So when I say target of p, that means A. That means reference. Are we okay with this? Now I'm telling you as something to know. I'm telling you as something to know. So this is the say. So if I say over here int reference ref of A is equal to A. Now let's call it ref. So ref is reference of A. So is the same as ref. These two are identical. And same as A. So target of P, ref, and A are identical things. OK? So anything that applies to all. So if I want to, if I have another pointer over here, and that pointer is Q, I can say Q is equal to address Q is set to address of A. Address of A will go to Q, right? I can say Q is set to address of ref. Address of A will go to Q, right? I can say Q is equal to address of target of P. Again, address of A will go to Q. These are identical things. Do we understand that back there? OK, beautiful. Now that we know this, now that we understand what references are, I am telling you, there is this magical thing called this, T-H-I-S. It holds the address of the object, current object, which means this, 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 in here will be S. This in here will be T. This in here will be the empty object. So when I call the function over here, when I use this, it means the address of the current object. I want the reference of it, I put an asterisk beside it, target of this. Therefore, target of this becomes the address of the current object. So if concatenation is happening to S, S's reference will go out. If concatenation happens to T, the T's reference will be out. And thank you for the question. All right. Are we okay? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? 
Okay, so in here, I'm just going to put these things together. I'm, I'm going to put this as a comment in here, and I'm just going to say, pointers and references explained. Okay, just if, if you want to go through it, this is what, this is what we talk. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right. I'm stopping the recording. Please, when I stop, don't come and ask me a question. If you have a question, don't be shy. Are you sure? All right. <laughs> I'm stopping. Last chance. Okay. <laughs>